This special tiger, now named Raphael, had captivated the attention of a particular woman for several days. She was determined to uncover what was troubling this majestic creature. It appeared that something was lodged in his paw, yet he meticulously hid it from the outside world. For days, she camped outside his enclosure, hoping to catch a glimpse of his well-guarded secret. But Raphael remained elusive. It wasn't until an unguarded moment that Raphael inadvertently revealed his secret. Unbeknownst to her at the time, her camera captured everything. When she later reviewed the footage, she realized that Raphael was the new star of Buccaneer Zoo, having arrived just the day before from a strenuous journey from China. Raphael was now trying to settle into his new home. The regular zoo visitors were eagerly anticipating the unveiling of the beautiful tiger. The zoo had housed various animals, but never a tiger before. Raphael was the superstar everyone had been waiting for. The following day was set for his public debut, where people would come face to face with the majestic wildcat. Raphael originated from the expansive savannas of Asia, where he spent his youth wandering alongside his companion. This environment, while natural, was riddled with risks, predominantly from poachers who were a constant threat to safeguard these splendid animals. They were frequently captured and sold to zoos under the pretense of conservation. Rather than being hunted and killed, this abrupt relocation proved to be a profound disturbance for Raphael, who had been a leading alpha male on the vast grasslands. Shortly after his arrival at the zoo, it was open to the public. Among the visitors was Carla, a 29-year-old wildlife photographer employed by a magazine. She was keen to capture Raphael's finest poses and dreamed of traveling to Africa or Asia to photograph wild animals in their own settings. She believed that photographing Raphael, recently moved, would still convey the spirit of the savannas through his gaze. Carla arrived at the zoo early in the morning to avoid the crowds and capture some peaceful shots of Raphael. She knew that once the zoo opened, almost all visitors would be eager to see him. Fortunately, she managed to stay ahead of the crowd. Over three days, she visited in the mornings, afternoons, and evenings, taking several photos. Each session revealed something unique about Raphael, particularly in the morning when he displayed special behaviors, possibly reminiscing his time under the open skies of his native savanna. In a secluded corner of the zoo, where few visitors wandered, Raphael the tiger maintained a low profile. Observing him closely, it was evident from his wary demeanor and the cautious glaze over his eyes that he was on high alert. As Carla watched him, his behavior stirred her curiosity, especially the way he guarded his paw. It appeared almost strategic, as if concealing something beneath it. Driven by curiosity, Carla approached the zoo management with a request. She wanted permission to photograph Raphael at dawn hoping the early hour would allow her to capture something the regular visiting hours might not reveal. To her delight, the zoo agreed, and the very next morning at 6 o'clock, Carla was at the zoo gates. Camera in hand, she moved stealthily towards the tiger enclosure, careful not to attract any attention that might alter Raphael's natural behavior. Concealed by a bush about 10 meters away from the cage, she found the perfect spot to observe and photograph him unnoticed. For the first half hour, nothing extraordinary occurred. Raphael seemed to merely rub his snout against his paw repetitively. Just as Carla was about to pack up her camera, a sudden movement caught her eye. Her hands, now clammy with anticipation, clutched the camera as she zoomed in closer on Raphael. To her astonishment, a little bird emerged from under his paw and took flight. This unexpected revelation shocked Carla. She attempted to snap more pictures of the fleeting bird, but it was too quick, disappearing from sight before she could capture it. After the bird's departure, Raphael resumed pacing in his cage, likely preparing for the day's visitors. Curious about this unusual behavior, Carla reviewed the photos from the previous days. It seemed that every morning, Raphael sheltered a little bird under his paw. Intrigued by this recurring event, Carla deduced there must be a specific reason why the bird visited Raphael. The key, she realized, lay in discovering where the bird flew after leaving the cage. Determined to solve this mystery, 
Carla enlisted the help of her boyfriend, Joey, a drone journalist with expertise in tracking movements from the air. The following morning, they stationed themselves behind the same bush. Drone at the ready, as expected, Raphael repeated his behavior, and this time, they were prepared, as the bird took flight. Joey launched the drone, which allowed them to track the bird's trajectory on his phone. The drone followed the bird across the town, leading them to an unexpected destination, another zoo. This revelation raised new questions about the bird's connection between the two locations. Carla and Joey, amazed by their findings, planned to delve deeper into this avian mystery, wondering what other secrets lay hidden within the ordinary sights of the city's zoos. At the zoo, an intriguing scene unfolded as a drone began its descent, appearing poised to land within one of the remote enclosures. Above, the drone hovered while Carlin and Joey, armed with their camera, eagerly tracked its trajectory. They watched as the bird navigated through the air, finally coming to rest near the tiger enclosures. The bird alighted beside a tiger that seemed distinctly feminine. Judging by her size and features, it nuzzled close to her, staying by her side for about 15 minutes before taking flight once more. The tigress, unperturbed, simply strolled off as if the encounter was a routine occurrence. Carla, witnessing this, was puzzled by the behavior but thrilled that Joey had captured the entire episode on film. They would have the chance to reflect on this curious interaction later. However, Carla's curiosity was piqued, and she felt compelled to investigate further. That afternoon, she visited another zoo to gather more information about the mysterious tigress. It emerged that the tigress, named Tigress, and another tiger named Raphael had originated from the same locale and had been transported to their respective zoos on the same day. They had once been a pair now separated by circumstance. Surprisingly, through the intermediary of the small bird, these two tigers had found a way to communicate and keep tabs on each other. Despite being only 10 kilometers apart, a distance that might as well have been worlds away for them. Moved by their story, Carla decided to document this poignant tale of undying love overcoming barriers. She titled her report, True Love Knows No Obstacles utilizing the drone footage to narrate this beautiful story. The zoos, touched by the tale of enduring love, agreed to reunite Tigress and Raphael. The decision was made to transfer Tigress to Raphael's enclosure, no longer willing to keep the lovers apart. The reunion was nothing short of heartwarming. Carla, with tears of joy in her eyes, was granted exclusive rights to cover the event. She watched, deeply moved as the two tigers embraced passionately, a testament to their unbreakable bond. After hearing this story, do you have any thoughts? Tell us in the comments section below. And then there is a similar warm story. Let's continue to see. Everything felt exceptionally calm and quiet on Luca's remote homestead, which often became isolated from the rest of the world during the winter months. Then, out of the blue, he heard a significant thud outside his door. Curious yet cautious, Luca knew he had to be prudent before stepping out. The wilderness surrounding his home was still very much untamed, and encounters, whether with humans or animals, could quickly turn perilous when one is alone and without immediate help. With safety in mind, Luca grabbed his pellet gun. Although not lethal, he hoped its sound might deter any unwelcome visitors with harmful intentions. He cracked the door open slightly ready to confront whatever lay outside. However, a low growl halted him in his tracks. That sound was unmistakable, a tiger. And judging by the depth of the growl, it was likely a very large one at that. Quickly retreating indoors, Luca peered out the window and saw the tiger lying on the cold ground. Seemingly unable to stand, the animal lifted its head weakly and moaned in pain. From his vantage point, Luca could see no obvious injuries. Yet something was clearly wrong. The tiger was massive but evidently in considerable distress. Luca's heart ached at the sight. He couldn't bear to hear the creature's painful cries. He immediately started calling various sanctuaries and rescue centers. But the recent snowfall meant most were unable to reach his farm. Only one rescue center agreed to help. But they would take over an hour to arrive. 
torn between wanting to assist and knowing the dangers. Luca felt helpless, despite his desire to help the ailing tiger. He was acutely aware that approaching such a powerful animal could be fatal. Its enormous paws and formidable jaws were intimidating, to say the least. As Luca waited for help to arrive, he felt each minute stretch interminably. The tiger was so close to the house that, in a desperate attempt to provide some relief, Luca opened a window and tossed a few small pieces of meat towards it. However, the tiger only sniffed at the offerings and ignored them, uninterested in eating. In a further attempt to help, Luca used a bottle to spray a small puddle of water near the tiger, hoping to at least keep it hydrated. This was indeed the longest hour of Luca's life, filled with tension and concern for the majestic, suffering animal just outside his door. Water splashed onto the ground next to the tiger as Luca cautiously approached the scene. Observing quietly, he noticed the tiger lift its head slightly to take a sip of water. However, with a sudden, heavy thud, the tiger's head dropped back onto the dusty earth. The simple act of trying to drink seemed to have drained all the energy from the once vibrant creature. It was a heartbreaking sight to see such a majestic animal in such a weakened state. Luca, maintaining a safe distance, could not fully examine the tiger, but he could clearly see the massive creature shivering, a sign of its distress and frailty. Just then, the sound of a truck rolling down the driveway reached his ears and Luca felt a wave of relief wash over him. However, the tiger did not share his relief. As the newcomers approached, the tiger attempted to rise, only to fall back each time. The presence of more people seemed to exacerbate its anxiety. While it is often true that an injured animal can become more dangerous, this tiger was so debilitated that it lacked the strength to pose any real threat. Luca hoped that the arriving help could provide the care the tiger desperately needed to recover. Despite his fear of other humans, Luca spoke softly through the window to the tiger, his voice seemingly having a calming effect on the agitated animal. Moments later, one of the sanctuary workers tranquilized the tiger with a dart gun, causing it to swiftly fall into a deep sleep. This allowed them to finally examine the animal more closely. Curious about the commotion, Luca stepped outside to observe the proceedings. As they lifted the tiger's paw, Luca reeled in shock at the sight of a large scar on the leg of the beast, a place where no fur grew. It was at that moment that Luca realized why the tiger had sought him out. They had a history together. Previously, Luca had affectionately named the tiger Cato. This unexpected reunion traced back to an incident three years prior. At that time, Luca was caring for his elderly family dog, a beloved companion that he had to let outside. Suddenly, the dog started growling at something and darted off into the woods. Given her advanced age and inability to cover long distances, Luca was concerned as venturing into the cold woods could prove fatal for her. He followed her, anxious about her well-being. The dog had traveled much farther than Luca had anticipated, nearly leaving his property. And when he finally caught up, she was barking fiercely at something on the ground. In her youth, she had been adept at catching snakes. But age had slowed her considerably. And Luca was worried she might still attempt to tackle whatever she had found. Rushing to her side, he discovered a tiny tiger cub ensnared in a trap. Luca had never set bear traps on his property, implying that it must have been placed by someone else. The little cub was severely injured its leg grievously wounded by the trap, and there was no sign of its mother. Speaking gently to his dog, she calmed down, allowing Luca to carefully free the cub and wrap it in his jacket. Blood was everywhere, and Luca was unsure if the cub would survive. In the days that followed, he checked the area for signs of the mother tiger, but fresh tracks in the snow were absent. It seemed the mother had realized her baby was too badly injured and had likely moved on possibly to protect other cubs in her care. The harsh cold meant staying with her trapped offspring could jeopardize the others. If it weren't for his dog leading him to the cub, the little tiger might not have survived the night. Even then, it was uncertain if the cub would make it. This profound encounter shaped a unique bond between Luca and the tiger. 
one that was rekindled that day at the sanctuary when they recognized each other once more. Luca discovered a tiny cub so young that it still required nursing. The cub had a severe wound on its front leg that looked alarming. When Luca attempted to contact local animal shelters for help, he found the snow too deep for any of them to reach his remote farm. Faced with no other options, he decided to take on the responsibility of caring for the injured cub himself. It was then that he named the cub Cato and began to nurture him back to health. Seeking guidance, Luca phoned the nearby sanctuary, where a veterinarian provided him with valuable advice on how to properly care for Cato, including feeding techniques. They also supplied a list of medicines that were suitable for a cub as small as Cato, ensuring that the doses were minimal due to his size. Fortunately, Luca was well prepared for the winter season and had all the necessary supplies on hand. However, he knew that having the right supplies was no guarantee of success. The little tiger was severely injured, and each hour he survived was a testament to his resilience. In an effort to soothe Cato, Luca gave him a milk mixture he had stored for other animals and added half a sleeping tablet to calm him. He meticulously cleaned and stitched up the cub's wound, which had started to show signs of infection. For the first few days, Cato was too weak to resist Luca's treatments. However, as he began to regain strength, he became less tolerant of the wound cleaning, often biting and scratching at Luca. This forced Luca to wear heavy gloves during the procedure. Despite the challenges, it was heartwarming for Luca to see Cato becoming stronger and more spirited. But one morning, Luca found Cato unresponsive in his crate, a situation that indicated a serious turn for the worse. With no time to seek advice, Luca's instincts and first aid training kicked in. He immediately started performing chest compressions on the tiger, hoping to revive him. Each step of Luca's journey with Cato was filled with challenges and learning experiences. Highlighting the unpredictable nature of caring for a wild animal and the deep commitment required to save a life. It seemed like an eternity before Cato stirred, his response delayed by the heavy weight of his injuries. As Cato gradually regained consciousness, Luca's relief was palpable. With Luca's vigilant care and the timely intervention of a veterinarian, they discovered that Cato was battling a severe infection, a silent threat lurking beneath the surface. Despite stabilizing him, the shadow of potential death still loomed over Cato, his fate hanging in the balance. In the ensuing days, a bond of trust deepened between Cato and Luca, amidst the delicate dance of administering medication and nurturing the cub back to health. Luca found solace in the companionship they shared. Cato, once wary, now accepted Luca's ministrations without hesitation, a testament to the profound connection they had forged. Yet, amidst the backdrop of their blossoming friendship, a whisper of concern lingered in Luca's mind. Was he taming the wild too much? Would Cato lose his instincts, his essence, in the safety of human care? Despite these doubts, Luca pressed on, driven by an unwavering commitment to Cato's well-being. As the seasons shifted and spring breathed new life into the world, Cato grew stronger, his wounds healed, but the scars remained, a reminder of the trials he had endured. With each passing day, Cato ventured further into the wilderness, reclaiming his rightful place in the natural order. Then, one day, Cato vanished into the vast expanse of the wild, his departure both bittersweet and inevitable. Though Luca mourned his absence, he knew it was a sign of Cato's resilience, his ability to thrive on his own terms. Years passed, marked by fleeting glimpses of the majestic tiger. Each sighting filled Luca with a mix of joy and apprehension, a silent prayer for Cato's safety echoing in his heart. And then, just when Luca had resigned himself to Cato's absence, fate intervened once more. The tiger returned, his once powerful form now marred by suffering. The rescue team's arrival brought a glimmer of hope amidst the despair. Their urgent mission clear, to save Cato from the grips of a grave infection. With every passing moment, the stakes grew higher, the race against time intensifying. Luca watched, his heart heavy with worry, as Cato's life hung in the balance. In the end, 
It was a collective effort, a testament to the power of compassion and determination. As Kato was gently loaded onto the truck, Luca couldn't help but feel a pang of sadness. Though others would now tend to Kato's needs, Luca knew that their bond would endure. A thread connecting them across the vast expanse of the wild. A complex system of ropes and pulleys was hastily assembled. An improvised solution to the daunting task of loading Kato onto the waiting truck. With careful coordination and sheer determination, the rescue team managed to hoist the massive tiger into the vehicle. Their efforts a testament to their unwavering commitment to saving his life. As the truck rumbled away from the farm, Luca couldn't shake the unsettling feeling that lingered in the pit of his stomach. Watching Cato disappear into the distance, he couldn't help but feel a profound sense of responsibility weighing heavily upon him. He knew that Cato's fate now rested in the hands of others. And he could only hope and pray for the tiger's recovery. The following day, Luca anxiously dialed the sanctuary, his heart pounding with anticipation. When he received the update on Cato's condition, a wave of relief washed over him. The news of the abscess being drained and Cato's gradual improvement filled Luca with a sense of hope and gratitude. However, the tranquility of relief was short lived. The very next day brought troubling news that shattered Luca's newfound sense of calm. Learning of Cato's escape from the sanctuary sent shockwaves through Luca's core. Disbelief warring with a gnawing sense of dread, as the sanctuary staff explained the circumstances surrounding Cato's escape, Luca couldn't help but feel a surge of frustration. How could such a critical lapse in security occur? Questions swirled in his mind, each one tinged with a sense of urgency and desperation. With Cato now roaming free, far from the sanctuary's protective confines, Luca knew that time was of the essence. The tiger's weakened state made him vulnerable to a myriad of dangers. His very survival hanging in the balance. The days that followed were fraught with tension and uncertainty as the rescue team mobilized to locate Kato. Each passing moment brought with it the ominous threat of the tiger succumbing to his untreated infection or encountering unsuspecting humans in his quest for survival. Against the backdrop of a sprawling countryside, the rescue team worked tirelessly, their determination unwavering despite the odds stacked against them. They scoured every inch of the terrain deploying traps and trackers in a desperate bid to find Cato before it was too late. Then, just when hope seemed all but lost, a breakthrough emerged, a farmer's sighting provided a glimmer of hope, igniting a spark of renewed determination within the rescue team. With precision and caution, they closed in on Cato, their hearts pounding with a mix of anticipation and apprehension. In the end, it was a tranquilizer dart that proved to be their saving grace. Sending Cato into a peaceful slumber. With bated breath, the team secured the majestic tiger. Their collective sighs of relief echoing through the air. Back at the sanctuary, Cato was welcomed with open arms. His return met with a mixture of jubilation and relief. Under the watchful eyes of dedicated veterinarians and caretakers, he embarked on the journey to recovery. His strength slowly returning with each passing day. Finally, the day arrived when Cato was deemed fit for release. His spirit unbroken despite the trials he had endured. With a sense of reverence and gratitude, the sanctuary staff bid farewell to their beloved charge. Watching as he disappeared into the wilderness, his silhouette a symbol of resilience and hope. As Luca stood among the sanctuary staff, witnessing Cato's triumphant return to the wild, he felt a profound sense of pride. Though their paths had diverged, the bond they shared would forever be etched in his heart, a testament to the transformative power of compassion and resilience. The story of Cato's journey spread far and wide, inspiring countless individuals with its message of hope and redemption. And as Luca reflected on the remarkable tale of survival and second chances, he knew that he had played a small yet significant role in shaping Cato's destiny. After watching this story, how do you feel? Feel free to share with us in the comments section below. And then there is another similar touching story. Let's continue to see. At first glance, the natural order within the animal kingdom appears to be quite straightforward. 
with predators equipped with sharp claws and teeth typically preying on more vulnerable species. This is the general rule. Yet the stories I'm about to share reveal some remarkable exceptions where animals have defied their natural instincts in the most unexpected of ways. The fourth story is particularly astounding. So make sure to keep reading. 1. Champ and his chicks. In the brutal world of nature, the fate of young chicks can often be precarious, a reality that photographer Candace was acutely aware of when she decided to rescue a group of chirping chicks. Already the owner of Champ, an 11-year-old golden retriever known for his gentle nature, Candace had no intention of keeping these chicks indefinitely. She purchased them from a local feed store that was shutting down. Concerned they would otherwise be sold for meat, her goal was to find a new, caring home for them, though the outcome was not as she initially envisioned. Introducing the chicks to Champ was a nerve-wracking experience. Typically, dogs do not react well to sudden intrusions, especially by birds, into their territory. Yet, Candace's anxiety soon dissipated as Champ observed the chicks with a serene and curious gaze. Surprisingly, he quickly took on a protective, almost parental role. The chicks snuggled into his fur for warmth, much like they would under the wings of a mother hen. Candace humorously remarked that Champ had effectively adopted the chicks, stepping into the role of their unexpected protector. This unusual bond is a beautiful illustration of the profound connections that can develop across different species. 2. Surya and Roscoe. The idea of a dog and a monkey forging a deep friendship might seem peculiar at first. But it becomes less so when considering their sociable natures. Monkeys, known for their human-like behaviors, and dogs, often called man's best friend, are both predisposed to social interactions. However, the friendship between Surya, a resident at the Institute of Greatly Endangered and Rare Species in Myrtle Beach, and Roscoe, a stray blue tick hound, transcends the typical. Roscoe wandered into the institute one day by chance. Where he met Surya, the two quickly became inseparable, their friendship blossoming into a profound bond that astonished all who witnessed it. This relationship defies the usual expectations of animal behavior, serving as a heartwarming example of interspecies companionship. When Surya, a primate, gracefully followed one of the dedicated volunteers into the wildlife reserve, it was clear that this was no ordinary animal friendship. Their connection underscores the potential for empathy and friendship beyond the boundaries of species and is a testament to the unexpected forms that companionship can take in the animal kingdom. And Baloo developed a bond so strong that it captured the hearts of many around the world. Their story is a reminder of the resilience and unexpected relationships that can emerge even in the most challenging conditions. Returning to the remarkable story of Surya and Roscoe, it all began when Surya, a volunteer at the local animal shelter, noticed a stray dog loitering nearby. Without a second thought, Surya approached the dog, who would later be affectionately named Roscoe. This initial interaction surprised not only the other volunteers but perhaps Roscoe himself, setting the stage for a remarkable friendship that would captivate everyone around them. Unlike the typical cautious nature displayed by many dogs towards unfamiliar humans, Roscoe was an exception. He immediately took to Surya, showing no signs of fear or apprehension. It quickly became apparent that Roscoe had been living a hard life on the streets. He was visibly malnourished and his coat was matted with dirt. The volunteers at the reserve recognized his plight and rallied to provide him with the necessary care and nourishment he desperately needed. As they nursed him back to health, Roscoe's affection for his new human friends, and particularly for Surya, only grew stronger, as the volunteers made efforts to find if Roscoe had a previous owner. Their attachment to him deepened, and secretly, many hoped no one would come forward to claim him. Their wishes were granted, and Roscoe became a permanent member of the sanctuary. The bond between Surya and Roscoe blossomed beautifully. They became inseparable companions, their every moment spent together strengthening their connection. Their touching story of friendship and loyalty inspired the creation of a children's book titled, Surya and Roscoe. The True Story of an Unlikely Friendship, authored by Dr. Antel, Thea Feldman, 
and photographed by Barry Bland. The book aimed to capture the essence of their bond. The duo even attended book signings, delighting children and adults alike with their endearing partnership. In a similar spirit of unlikely animal friendships, the story of Baloo the bear, Leo the lion, and Sher Khan the tiger, known affectionately as the BLT, at Nose Ark Animal Sanctuary in Locust Grove, Georgia, also exemplifies remarkable interspecies bonds. Rescued from a dire situation during a drug raid in Atlanta, these three young animals were brought to the sanctuary suffering from severe neglect. In the unfamiliar and nurturing environment of the sanctuary, they found comfort and security in each other. Their unique friendship offering a profound example of emotional resilience and companionship across species lines. Both of these heartwarming tales underscore the incredible relationships that can form in the most unexpected circumstances. Reminding us of the universal need for friendship and care in the animal kingdom and beyond. Leo, Sher Khan, and Baloo, three rescued animals from disparate backgrounds, developed an unexpectedly strong bond while recovering at a wildlife sanctuary. Their interactions, which included snuggling, grooming, and playful antics, were heartwarming to observe, this camaraderie was particularly poignant given the harsh realities from which they had been rescued. These animals, during their recovery, leaned on each other forming a familial support network that seemed to transcend their species differences. Sanctuary staff, including a dedicated worker named Hedgecloth, noted this phenomenon, it is not unusual for young animals from different species to create protective alliances during their early years. Before reaching sexual maturity, initially, volunteers at the sanctuary thought this bond would diminish as the animals grew older. However, the friendship not only persisted but thrived well beyond expectations. Even after the animals reached sexual maturity, remarkably, the trio maintained their close relationship for 17 years, sharing a spacious three-acre enclosure. Here, they enjoyed their freedom and safety, living out their days together eating, resting, and playing, long after overcoming their initial traumas. The vast space available to them never seemed to tempt them apart. They were almost always seen together. Following the deaths of Leo in 2016 and Sher Khan in 2018, the sanctuary chose to bury them within the enclosure they had so delightedly explored. Symbolically honoring their unbreakable bond, even in their final days, Sher Khan and Baloo remained by Leo's side, and Baloo showed the same loyalty to Sher Khan when he passed away. This enduring friendship, from their early days to their final moments, exemplifies a rare and profound interspecies bond. Another extraordinary relationship formed under unusual circumstances involved Timur, a male Siberian tiger, and Armor, a goat, back in 2015 within a tiger enclosure. Initially intended as prey for Timur, Armor was not attacked by the tiger. Instead of succumbing to his predatory instincts, Timur chose to befriend the goat, opting for companionship over predation. For five years, Timur and Armor lived together in the same enclosure, peacefully coexisting. This relationship was marked by moments where Timur displayed considerable restraint. He never harmed Armor, even when the goat boldly took over his bed. This remarkable restraint was not due to a lack of hunger, as Timur had previously consumed other goats and continued to have opportunities to eat armor but consistently chose not to. Throughout their time together, the tiger and goat not only shared living space but also engaged in playful interactions, such as gentle head budding. This unusual friendship, much like the trio's, highlights the surprising and touching connections that can form across species challenging the natural predatory instincts and offering a glimpse into the emotional capacities of animals. In a remarkable example of the bonds that can form between different species under unique conditions, there was once an unusual attempt to train a tiger named Timur to hunt using a goat called Armor as bait. Contrary to expectations, this training exercise did not proceed as intended. Instead of viewing Armor as prey, Timur developed a bond with the goat, leading to a captivating friendship that drew attention from around the globe. 
Thousands of tourists flocked to witness this extraordinary relationship firsthand, marveling at the sight of a tiger and a goat coexisting in peaceful harmony. An occurrence that seemed almost miraculous. What was it that stopped Timur from seeing armor as just another meal? Zookeepers who monitored their interaction closely provided some insights into this unexpected turn of events. They suggested that Armor's incredible display of courage was pivotal. Unlike typical prey animals, Armor showed no signs of fear and did not attempt to flee or hide from Timur. The formidable Siberian tiger. This surprising bravery not only impressed Timur but also the zookeepers who witnessed their interactions. Additionally, Timur's remarkable self-control introduced a fascinating dimension to their relationship. Despite his predatory instincts, Timur restrained himself, choosing companionship over his natural hunting instincts, as he had grown genuinely fond of armor and started to care for him deeply. This unique and beautiful friendship endured for five years. However, it eventually came to an end due to escalating tensions between the pair. As armor became more assertive, Timur's tolerance began to diminish. Following a near-violent incident in 2016, Armour was moved to his own enclosure to ensure his safety, marking the conclusion of their close bond. Despite its end, the memory of their affectionate companionship endures as a testament to the incredible bonds that can form across species lines. Challenging the very nature of their instincts. Which of these stories touched your heart the most? Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to sharing more captivating tales with you soon in another video.